people are always asking, you know, just how hard is life on a boat. I mean, here we are making this uh, Herculean two-day cross Lake Erie effort. And, uh, I mean, the answer is, you know, life ain't easy on a boat. It's a lot of work. A lot of work. Luckily, some of it can be done from a hammock. I've been warned that there are occasionally these uh, drift nets. That there'll be one kind of big flag thing that uh, indicates like the end of it, and then there's a bunch of little white foam floaty chinguses that uh, it's net in between them. So you you can't go in between them though because there's net there, and you can get a caught in your prop. So you got to go like all the way around. But relatively hard to see, and you think you're just in open water out here so it's uh keep an eye out for it I, i'm not actually 100 percent sure that's what it is but i'm pretty sure it's not a crab trap on lake here so. out here hanging out on the front deck lake erie is eerily calm sorry i was just begging to be done but uh, you really kind of get the sense of that whole inland ocean here because you know, ahead of us, it's, uh, we're looking toward Michigan, but you can't see any land. North of us, that's Canada, you can't see any land. Behind us, this is uh, still some Canada and New York, and you can't see anything. Really only only south of us can you see a little bit of uh, Ohio and shortly here you won't be able to see it at all but uh, belying its true nature um, is extremely calm in fact it's just been a really nice breeze that's been pushing the sails in a productive manner for almost 36 hours now and it uh, looks like it's going to continue the whole way. So, you know, it's uh, a good lesson, I suppose, that, you know, finding the correct weather window can make a lot of difference because a lot of people had only really nasty things to say about Lake Erie. And for us, it's been, it's just been absolutely gorgeous. So show you I've got some lights on the horizon so I turned on my other uh, system here uh, this is my other chart plotter that I built with a Raspberry Pi this one I can show you uh, you can actually see the other boat so, I'm gonna check this out. so if you look at these this this little red here this is us and this one up here this is the this is the other boat that is coming toward us if I mouse over, if I looked up that number, I would see it's whatever ship that it is. And then if I continue to scroll in, I can also see this is his trajectory. That's where he's going. And if I scroll in on mine, I can see which way my heading dictates that I'm going. So what we want to make sure is that these two lines are going to pass each other here. So I think I'll course correct a little bit more to port to make sure that we don't uh, come that close to it. So here's another what looks like a fairly close call. But if you look at the, at the scale of what 
we're actually passing about two miles away from each other. This is what that looks like outside. Two miles off our course. Getting a little tired here, so um, gonna make it to this little island called Haley Ali Island. Found a little spot. I have to kind of thread the needle here between two. Uh, two reefs, but uh, there's a little anchorage down here at the south bay of Heli Island, so I can get there and drop an anchor then. Um, I think I could almost be in bed by 4 a.m., so, you know, I'll have that going for me. around the boat. That's a lot of fun for you at home. So I will admit to a, uh, a decent amount of ignorance where regard to international law is um, I wasn't sure if I sailed into Canadian waters, how much of an issue that is. So I took a channel closer to the American side here on the Detroit River. It's actually still in Canadian waters, but the, to actually be in American waters, it wasn't really a channel, um, and it was not that deep. So I don't know, I'm going down this primrose path here. It's like trees on both sides and lined with red and green. I'm hoping it doesn't march me straight into a customs or immigration point. We'll see. Detroit River. Uh, 
not pleasure boating. We have the river flowing against the wind, and we're going with the wind, so that the waves are coming with us, but it means that the boater cavitates every time you get a little trough in there, which takes away all your momentum, and the river flowing against us, and then big ass heat boats, and then for some reason the boat will just turn, I don't know if one of the clumps of seaweed catches us, but guys behind us kind of an interesting setup so they've got all their boats rafted together and then right here they've got this uh, apparatus and it's got uh, floats below it and then like a flat deck with a kitchen and a porta john and then up top they've got uh, couches and kind of an entertainment area it's like the ultimate party barge setup so uh, apparently this is a spot where ultimate partying happens. We were just happy to be here. This is what the uh, pulled up with the anchor. Not sure if this is America or Canada. So since I'm not sure. I'm going to deploy my emergency Canadian device. <laughs> 